For this interview with author Julia Quinn, I decided to call in some reinforcement. Evening executive producer, Megan Stewart. Megan um, has read all of the books and she would come to the morning meetings and say, oh, I read book one and oh, I read book two. And, <laughs> Megan, where are you now? <laughs> oh, I finished. I sped through all eight. Watched Bridgerton and I just wasn't ready to leave the universe yet. I'm not really much of a romance novel person, but I was like, maybe I am now after reading this. And a lot of people are asking the same question. The proof is in the popularity. Oh, pardon me. She did me. The series, which follows eight siblings as they find love in Regency England, is the biggest show ever for Netflix, with more than 80 million people watching. And that led to an explosion of book sales. But to be clear, Julia Quinn's books had already broken ground on bestseller lists. She's had 18. I'm not surprised that it would be the people at Shondaland who would realize, wait a second, these are some great stories and there are a lot of people who want it. What do people often misunderstand about romance novels? People think they're all the same. They think if they all have a happy ending and they're all about two people, then they must all be the same. But of course they're not. Or you could read a mystery series where like somebody dies in a small town in Maine like every single week. You're like, if that's more realistic, I want to live in my world. Do you know psychologically why we are loving this so much? I think that we didn't realize that we all wanted these happy endings. Um, I mean, I think a lot of the people who've been reading romance will be kind of like, told you so. I think there also is an inherent gender bias. I mean, romance novels are perceived as being the feminine. People saying, oh, you're giving women unreasonable expectations of men. And I'm saying, why is that unreasonable? Uh, you know, like that we expect somebody treats us with respect and, and, and uh, that should not be unreasonable. Like, you know, guys, you, you need to step up. You created a news. So Quinn wrote the Bridgerton series 20 years ago, and that work is paying off in ways she never imagined. But the craziest moment so far happened recently. When Reggae Jean Page hosted Saturday Night Live, that was nuts. I can't even put it into words. I'm just like, uh, that last scene where they did the one with the, you know, the fake intimacy coordinators where, you know, so you actually had the characters that I had originally written now on Saturday Night Live, that, that might have been the craziest moment of all. Phoebe and I thought that if I shift my body this way, then I would cover her a bit more. Yeah. And oh, wait, actually, you guys want to tap out for a second? And speaking of season one's leading man, she got to meet him and the rest of the Bridgerton cast while on set during filming. Reggae Jean Page really is that handsome in real life. And when I met him, he had a cup of coffee and then we were going to get a picture and he handed the cup of coffee to somebody and then turned and smiled at me and I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, how do you go through life like that? I burn for you, Daphne. And we had one final burning question about those steamy scenes. We're finally seeing these intimate scenes shown to us from a female gaze. They're showing intimacy as something that's not transactional, as something that's not objectified, but two people who care about each other and are in, are in love. And for some reason, we think that that is racier, um, maybe because we enjoy it more. Is it awful that I'm enjoying it? And no doubt people are enjoying it at a time when an escape feels necessary. It's the story we didn't know we needed from a genre and an author that's been there all along. You are a Bridgerton.